25. Which of the following nuclei is most likely to decay by positron emission? And then explain your choice. Ooh, okay. So we got a little bit of a multiple choice going on here, right? Um, you know, minus the fact that there's only three choices. So we have a 33.33% chance of getting the right answer correct. And then we just have to explain your answer. But my explanation will come with the, you know, the stuff that I put on the screen for you guys. So... Let's go. The first thing is, is that whenever you're trying to find out what type of emissions going on, the best thing to find out first is how many protons a atom has and how many neutrons, right? Because all of this is dealing with the nucleus. So we definitely need to find those protons and those neutrons, and we just got to compare them. So here we go. So I'm going to put all of these three in nuclide notation. So let's first do chromium-53. So here's my nuclide notation right here, right? Remember, there's always three, the three boxes for your nuclide notation. We'll put down at the bottom here that this is chromium. Ooh. Chromium-53. And remember, this number over here is always going to be the atomic mass, right? It's always going to be the number in the top upper left corner because the mass can always change per element. So I know that I'm dealing with a total of 53 over here. I'm just going to put that this is the atomic mass or, you know, you could say mass number. It doesn't really matter, right? For me, mass number, atomic mass, tomato, tomato, and then the bottom number represents the atomic number. Now the atomic number is the special number that every element has unique. Um, so we got to look on the periodic table, find out where chromium is and find out its atomic number because that number will never change. Now chromium is a uh, CR on the periodic table and it's got a number 24. Okay. So keep in mind that the atomic number is always just your number of protons. So that's what this atomic number is. The mass number is the protons with a little extra kick, right? The mass number is the protons plus the neutrons. So we know that we have a collective 53 protons and neutrons, and we know that we have 24 protons. So let's just write that down. So we know that we have 24 protons And if we know that we have a collective 53 protons and neutrons, what would I have to do here to find out just the neutrons? Yeah, I would subtract, right? So I subtract very weirdly. Uh, but if you want to know my method to my madness, I take each row together. So I'll say 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 minus 4 is a negative 1. So then I'll just say in my head, okay, this is the 10, so that would be 30. So 30 minus 1 is 29. And voila, that's how many neutrons. So we have 29 neutrons and 24 protons. Okay, so let's now just do the same thing for the other ones, right? And I'm just putting this... That's beautiful. All right, so here we go. Next one is the next guy up here. We're going to say that this is manganese. Manganese, not magnesium. 51. The 51 is the mass number, so that goes on the top. That's the total of protons and neutrons. Manganese on the periodic table is MN. And MN's number is always 25. So... If we subtract the two of them, we could find out how many neutrons. Right now, we know that we have 25 protons. So 25 protons. And now let's do Christina's wacky way of sub subscription, <laughs> subtraction, subtraction. Jeez Louise. To find out uh, what it is, right? 5 minus 2 is 3. 1 minus 5 is a negative 4. 30 minus 4 is 26. 
So you have 26 protons. Okay, cool. No, 26. Did, were you screaming at me? I heard you. 26 neutrons. All right, and then we got to do the last one. So here we go. Uh, iron 59. Okay, iron 59. We got a 59 as the mass number, so that goes on the top. So that's the total of protons and neutrons. I look on the periodic table. I got to find out where iron is. Iron is Fe. And we got a 26 going on here. So I know for a fact that we have 26 protons. 26 protons. And let's find out those neutrons by doing the subtraction, right? 5 minus 2 is 3. 9 minus 6 is 3. So no wackiness going on there. So 33 neutrons. Okay. But now where do we go from here? Well, great question. We have to know why some types of nuclei emit via positron or beta or alpha, right? Or do an electron capture. But in this case, we're talking about positron emission. Now, positron emission is when you're releasing a positron into the atmosphere as your products. So when you're doing that, all we have to know, and this is kind of killing me, it's not in between these two. <laughs> Um, what we basically have to know is just know that anytime that you are releasing a positron, that means that your n to p ratio is low. It's lower than what it is normally. It's lower than what it should be when it's classified as a stable isotope. What's going on is these n to p ratios are so low that you will release a positron and what's going to happen is it's going to bring up that ratio to make it normal again. So that means that the one that is going to undergo positron emission has to have, in this case, you're looking for the lowest n to p ratio, right? The lower it is, the highly likely that you're undergoing to go, you know, positron emission. But now, how do we find out this n to p ratio? Well, remember, any type of ratio is always just a fraction. And ratios are very specific. They always say n first. So neutrons come first. To find out that ratio, all you got to do is the number of neutrons divided by the number of protons. So that's where the n to p comes from, right? The n comes from the number of neutrons, and then the p comes from the number of protons, and there's your n to p ratio. So all we have to do here is just divide, whoop, what are we doing? We have to divide 29 by 24, divide 26 by 25, and divide 33 by 26. And let's see what ratio we get for each one. Now, normally I do this on, you know, the calc on the screen, but since this is just like a simple division, I'm just going to whip out, you know, my calc over here, and I'm just going to do the quick uh, division just to see what we get. So 29 divided by 24 is roughly about 1.21 if I round. Let's see, 26 divided by 25 Whoa, is 1.04, and then 33 divided by 26 is 1.27. Okay, I think we found it, right? Positron emission is always when that entropy ratio is low. You got to bring it up. And this guy, this is roughly a one-to-one -one relationship. Mm-mm, that's way too low. So... Which of the following is most likely to, to decay by positron emission? It is our manganese. It's got way too low of a n to p ratio. And that's it. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much.
We opened up memberships for the uh, new school year. If you want to become a member, help the channel out a little bit more. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I hope you're doing great. I hope you have a great day. A lovely day. Keep studying hard. I'm rooting for you guys. Good luck on your tests and quizzes. And let's crush this new school year. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.